When I see Mark, I just see Mopar. I, I see Mopar in the true expression of passion, commitment to the brand, enthusiasm for every project. Oh, I'm sorry. You feel I didn't mean to. Or are you going with what you're saying there? No. <clears throat> <laughs> this time on Graveyard Cars. This is what makes a, an e-body steering column kind of unique is this little adapter piece on here. Dave makes a final push to get Buck's 383 Challenger RT finished before tackling the newly revealed 392 Hemi Cuda full time. Ron from Magnum Force surprises Mark with a plethora of suspension options to enhance the firepower CUDA. Holy smoke. Well, I, got, I got everything laid out so you could make some decisions here okay. on which parts you want to go with. But now he has to decide between original equipment and aftermarket parts. Alyssa gets hands-on experience with Buck's Challenger decals. God, those are the toughest ones because of the way they're cut. Mm-hmm. I think that looks really good. And Mark shows off his moves for Will with a new magic hat. <laughs> but when the sponsor of Operation Firepower decides to visit GYC, the ghouls race against the clock to get the 392 crate Hemi mocked into the car. It's almost on that it's hose. It's gonna hit on this hose now. Will they get it installed before he arrives? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Find out on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the Cranberry Dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. In case you got stuck filing TPS reports, here's what you missed. Mark first unveiled Operation Firepower to the ghouls as his own unremarkable 71318 CUDA. When a mystery client requested Mark for a super secretive project, the ghouls were shocked to learn that not only did they need to drop everything they're working on to restore this car, but that it needed to be showroom ready in only four months making it one of the fastest builds in Graveyard Cars history. Returning from the Dipper, the ghouls banded together and finished the Cuda's bodywork in record time. Mark revealed the true purpose of Operation Firepower to build a 1971 Cuda featuring a brand new plug and play 392 Hemi crate engine. 60 days. When I say there is no tomorrow, there, no, is there ain't one. no tomorrow at all. We gotta That's the first time it. that actually makes sense. And the build will be revealed at SEMA in Las Vegas. Now, with the sponsor curious to see it installed before SEMA, the ghouls need to make sure the crate Hemi will fit before his arrival. And to do that, they need some help from their favorite suspension gurus, Magnum Force Racing. Well, they didn't want Joe Dirt himself. Hey, hey. <laughs> Wow, look at that. How's How long it going? Have you guys been here, buddy? We just got here a little while ago. Ron showed up today from uh, Magnum Force. He brought uh, one of his techs with him, Jeff, and they brought all the pieces that they knew they needed to be able to do this amazing conversion that we're getting ready to do. Yeah, we've got we've got multiple suspensions for you to pick from, and oh. disc brakes and uh, oiling system components. We've got everything, headers, whatever you need. So you saved the day. I'm Ron Jenkins from Magnum Force Racing and uh, came here today to bring a, quite a selection of different components for Mark to pick from for this build that they're doing. Yay! Because the time <laughs> it would have took, uh, if we would have been able to figure it out, yeah, we're OE, right? We're OE. Right. The first thing Absolutely. I thought of was you. Awesome. When I got that call, I could hear the panic in his voice. I could hear, and that's understandable. It is really understandable, actually, because we've only recently been going through some of these builds ourselves and understanding some of the idiosyncrasies that you run into along the way. Oh, this is fantastic. We're colliding 1971 and 2016 together, so you, yeah. You know, the past harmonizes, as Stephen King would say, all right? And in this particular case, I hope it harmonizes on our behalf. You know, yeah. I'm gonna tell you the truth, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> you don't know where to start? <laughs> I got the engine from well, far there. 
That's a great place to start. We've, we've got an engine. We've, we've uh, as you know, there's a transmission on the way. Yeah, yeah. Which is going to play really, really good with this whole thing. So we'll put the shifter in the stock position, which will be really good. What makes this new technology so good? It's reliability, it's performance, all that. So we've got a number of options for them suspension-wise to get some modern suspension technology underneath the car that's going to make the car handle and drive a lot nicer. This is the only way you learn is trial and error. I, don't, I have the errors handled. I don't have the time for the trial at all. We that's, all have the errors the under months. our belts. <laughs> so this is fantastic. So all this, yeah. all this somehow's got to get in that car and run. Yeah, yeah, and, and it will. It will. By the time we're done, <laughs> no it's, kidding. it's going to run nice, yeah. I'm not too proud to say that I, I'm concerned and was a lot more concerned before my conversation with him in as much as I gave my word to Chrysler, to Mopar. I mean, that's it, right? That's the holy grail. I mean, that's the 50-foot, you know, shark. That's that's the big one. That's the big enchilada. So, you know, I could use a lot of metaphors to describe it, but it's big. It's huge. It's huge, Jerry, huge. Remember Seinfeld and Banya? It's, oh, he said gold. It's gold, Jerry, gold. <laughs> While Magnum Force lays out their new gear, Dave gets to work on the steering column for the Firepower Cuda. Uh, what we're working on here is our uh, steering column for our 1971 Cuda, our firepower car. Kind of gathered up, I had half of a, of a steering column, and so I tried to gather up as many 71 parts as I could to uh, build a column. So I got everything detailed, got everything painted, uh, I got a new turn signal switch. Uh, the thing that makes a 71 unique from a 1970 or 71 and up is this little deal right here. You got to kind of turn that there to actually release the the lock to pull your key out of the column. The other ones, you just turn it you know, all the way back and pull the key out. But in 71, they went to this locking steering wheel. Uh, what's unique actually about this steering column in particular is uh, on the end of the shaft, you normally would have a style of a coupler, which I got like right here. So this is the normal coupler you would have, which would be in conjunction with uh, this piece right here. And there's a boot and then your steering shaft. So this would be on the end of your steering shaft that would hook to your standard OE you know, steering box. But in this case, you can see we got this really cool U-joint. Uh, the difference is we got a rack and pinion system on this. We got a Magnum Force suspension. We're gonna use an actual OE original steering column, but on the end of the steering column, I incorporated this U-joint, which will go to the rack and pinion steering. And then from there, I gotta actually run this style of shaft, which is a double D shaft. And the double D means it's a D shaped on both sides. So this will actually fit into this end, and then this will actually hook into our rack and pinion steering. So this will obviously be cut down to whatever length I need. Now we start with the shaft. I'll run the shaft through and get all the pieces on here first, and uh, I'll start building out the front pieces. This is your very end. This is what makes a, an E-body steering column kind of unique is this little adapter piece on here. This piece will go on the end of it, then the steering wheel actually just bolts onto that. Now that Ron's had time to organize his buffet of parts, it's time for Mark to choose how the new crate Hemi will be mounted in the 71 Cuda. Hey. What'd you, what'd you do? Uh, yeah, there, there was a Cuda explosion, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's what we get. Remember, remember that from Tommy Boy after he ripped the door off? What'd you do? What'd you <laughs> <laughs> Last time I was out here, this was all up there. Holy smoke. Well, I got, I got everything laid out so you could make some decisions here okay. on which parts you want to go with and okay. stuff. I, I have a tendency to gravitate towards which direction I think you're going to go, mm -hmm. but we can talk about some of the idiosyncrasies of the individual components and okay. stuff. I'm actually blown away that Ron had the fortitude to bring so much stuff with him and give me the options. I didn't, I would just be grateful if he was here to help Big Brother it, but I mean, he brought everything. You know, I brought you options. Okay. I know what kind of cars you like to build and that sort of thing, and we can yeah. go any direction you want to. Okay. That's one of the cool things about the modular suspension is that it's designed to utilize our dropped spindles, which use Mopar brakes, which means your stock Mopar like 73 and up brakes, like the Cuda. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Let's say I'm going with 15-inch wheels. Well, I don't, you don't have, you don't have room you to have put 14-inch six-piston right. stuff on there, so you have to do what you have to do. Sure. In that case, you've got the spindles. To take the stock brakes. To take the 73 and up rotor with the bigger bearing. Exactly. And that'll accommodate my 15-7 rally wheel. So my goal on there this, of course, is that outside to look really stock, as stock as we can make it look, right. even though we got all this craziness under the hood. Uh, knowing that they've already been down every one of these roads in the last, just ironically, couple of months, really makes me feel comfortable that we're not gonna have any trouble, too much trouble, getting this car done by the deadline. So the next task I reckon I gotta do 
is go through here and pick. Yeah, you right? do. Yeah, you got some choices to make. It may take us a while to figure out what the combination is, but I'm fairly confident that because Ron brought so much stuff up with him and we had a few things before, we're gonna find the combination that puts this engine and transmission in this 71 Cuda. I could use any of this, all of it or none of it. Right. What is the, I see the tubular version and then I see the one that we put in the little 70 Cuda, is that right? Right, yeah, And exactly. that's called what? That's called the transformer. It's our modular suspension. It's the one that allows guys to be able to build this uh, incrementally if they want to. Uh, but its advantages over the other one, yeah. strong as Oh, it looks strong. Strong, strong, strong. Okay. Um, it's solid, what, quarter inch steel? St extremely beefy. It's, uh, it's a combination of 3 16 8 inch. Uh, those lower control arms are built much like you'd see in an off-road truck or something. Jeez. You're not going to hurt those things. So uh, very, very burly. Okay. Very beefy. So, so it also would inherently weigh a little bit more, It would too. weigh a little bit more, right. For guys that are going drag racing and aren't going to see quite as much hey. street abuse or something to that effect. You? <laughs> so you can go with one of the uh, tubular suspensions, too. Okay. Uh, going to lighten things up. That would lighten the suspension up between 100 and 150 pounds, believe it or not. So you can imagine from a drag race standpoint. That's that, cubic. Yeah. That puppy is yeah. ideal. Yeah. yeah. Your uh, passion for stock brakes, for example. This puppy uses our stock Mopar drop spindle. When I say stock, it's a drop spindle for a Mopar, but it's based on stock components. So you could put 73 and up brakes on there if you wanted to. So you want a single piston floating caliper staring you in the face outside the wheel, that would be the way to it go. It sounds weird, but that is kind of what I want. So yeah. would this be the knuckle that I'd go with? That would be the one. That goes with that suspension, as a matter of fact. So Mark's chosen the modular suspension, our transformer as we call it. And uh, that's definitely a good choice for this build. For what the intended use of the car is, I think that's going to be an excellent choice. So if I was sticking with a, the stockist look, I like this. I think this is closest to what a K-member would be looking like instead of a tubular. So, and you're saying this one, we can just put those spindles on it, put the 73 and up rotor and bearing setup on it, the single piston caliper. Exactly. I like that look a little bit more than the tubular look. Although I could see for the race guys or the guys that are really getting serious about weight, horsepower to weight ratio, the tubular one would be the way to go, no doubt, hands down. So we go coil overs, tubular, completely adjustable upper control arms. We go with the modular rack, which is called the, again, I'm sorry. This is a transformer. Transformer, okay. Yeah. All right, so that rules out a lot of other stuff that's sitting here. This, I assume, is going to adapt me Will that adapt me from the Mopar steering column? It sure will. Okay. This end is three quarters of an inch, so that's gonna go over the stock column. Got so it. you can just trim your column based on where you Got want this it. to fit. This is gonna go right on beautiful. the rack and pinion. Use a stock OEM. That's yeah. beautiful. Uh, we've got quite a few different aspects of this covered now. So I think that this is going to be as close to painless an install as one could hope for. We'll marry the engine, the transmission together. We'll get the mounts on it. We'll get them mounted onto our transformer suspension and we'll go get the car over onto a rack and we'll try to marry them together and see what kind of interference we have. Is that it? Sounds like a great plan of attack. I love it. I love awesome. it. All right. I'm doing this because I don't want to do any lifting. You guys enjoy yourself. Hey, where'd Mark go? Yeah, Mark. Give me, give me I think I hear my shake. phone ringing. Yeah. I think his Good mom job, was. Guys. Good where'd job. Mark go? I think his mom was calling him again. Oh, that's who it is. It's my mom. I, mean, I got to go talk to my mom. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, we got a pretty good part of our steering column put together here. But I'll kind of show you a little bit of how it works here. So here's your actual steering wheel lock. And there's like a little star piece, this dude right here that'll go on there after and it'll kind of fit in there. And this is what it locks in to lock your steering wheel. So whenever your key goes on, you can watch that thing pop up and it pops up out of the way, so this will turn free or else your steering wheel won't turn whenever you're driving. So that's like your ignition on position, so everything's out of the way. Now, whenever you turn your key off to shut it off, you can see this doesn't come down. So it kind of is in a lock position. You got to depress this button down. Once that goes down, then that'll turn all the way and you can take your key out. Everything seems to be working good, and I kind of cycle everything, make sure everything's working. I got everything greased in there. I'll shoot a little bit of, uh, uh, lithium grease in here and stuff uh, to keep that kind of lubricated and keep it working properly and then I'll just keep building my piece out. So the next piece will go in, will hold my re my bearing and everything in which will center the shaft and then I'll be able to get this piece on there to lock the, 
the column and build out the front part of it. So we're almost done. Yeah, I got the turn signal switch in there. All I got to find is a turn signal actual knob and uh, lacking one of those. Hey, boss, check this baby out. It's our firepower column. That looks really yeah. nice. So you got yeah. the organosol and then the little bit different shade here. You got the glossy base down here. You got our Detroit joint on the end of the shaft. That's a good job. Yeah. I'm uh, way ahead on the SEMA car. It's still in paint, uh, which is great. So uh, being ahead is always a good thing. So if I can get all my parts detailed out, all laid out and ready to go, uh, as soon as the car comes in here, I can just bang away at it and just knock it out really fast. What's the on? Is he actually close to painting on that Cuda? Yeah, he's really close. So we're getting getting down to the wire now. So I've just got, got everything set up. I mean, all our pedal assembly, brake booster, everything's lined out, ready to go in the car. Wow. I'm gonna go torture him because he likes to he likes to go home at like, he starts at eight in the morning and goes home at 8.15. Yeah, yeah. So that's a short day for anybody. I wanna make sure that he gets it done. Me, 12 hours a day. Yeah. Dave, nine hours a day. Will, 15 minutes. Yeah, so. so. Have you seen his magic hat lately? No, but I brought in a spare. Pretty oh, snazzy. Oh, that's nice. You mind? Yeah, I'll go for it. Oh, yeah. Hey, I know what cool. Yeah? Get a magic hat. I got to get the magic hat. Yeah, so everybody's. Ooh, I'm gonna go see if Will wants to put the magic hat. Yeah, see if he wants to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, I got the magic hat. Oh, that's with this hat. No, dumb. <laughs> I see your hat. Can we not put it in the... Oh, you dumb <laughs> You got sealer on my... <laughs> well, what, you painted eight seconds ago? Yes! You half-wit? <laughs> I just said don't throw... Now it ain't his magic. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> okay, so getting ready to put the door in the booth, get some paint work done. Mark's probably heading back up front. Oh, crap. Can you use that? You don't think so? The <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Who has sex with a fire extinguisher? Everything's coming along really good. You know, all our classic auto air stuff, I was finally able to actually install it in the car. So I got our beautiful heater box in there. Dash has been installed, uh, rear seat, all the carpeting. You know, so it's, it's really coming along very quickly now. Uh, all I gotta do is, you know, kind of a few parts trickling in here and there and just a few more pieces to put in the interior and then a few more things to do in the engine compartment. We'll be ready to start this car up and head down the road. With headway made on Buck's Challenger, Dave steps into the engine room to help get the 392 ready for installation. So I just got back out into the shop. The guys have been working on the engine all morning long. Uh, just a quick update. They've had to take the flywheel off to put the second part of the scatter shield on. This is the big steel plate that protects the back of the block should something come unglued. Uh, the rest of it is the actual bell housing as part of the scatter shield as well. Now you see that they've got the oil pan off. This is kind of a cool thing. Because we're using the Magnum Force uh, Transformer suspension, we got to use a rear sump type pan, which uh, Dirte brought with him. It's a gold Milladon. But to put it on, this was designed to go in a Challenger, which is a front sump. What that means is this is the pickup tube that came with the engine if you were putting it in a Challenger, and it locates it geometrically at the front of the engine. This one changes it, if you were to bolt it in the same location, it moves it to the back of the engine, the gold one. That means it takes a different oil pan. This is all Jeff's idea. Jeff had us fumbling around for a while here, trying to <laughs> trying to find our way to figure out, well, let's weld a tab onto the, onto the, uh, the windage tray. So we were getting ready to just reinvent the wheel. 
an old cool breeze, the old bull up on the top. Remember, there's the two bull, there's the young bull that wants to come down and nail all the chicks, and, <laughs> and then there's the That's old me. bull sitting up on the top <laughs> that says, nah, let's just go down there and take our time and do one at a time. I don't know what the metaphor is. Anyway, he knew what the answer was. He just wanted to make us figure it out on our own. I'm taking every second I have right now to get as much done on Buck 71 Challenger as I possibly can uh, before I get stuck with this Firepower Cuda. So I'm going to try to knock out the rear bumper as well as the rear volance and get the whole back end of the car done. You putting the back together? Hey, what's up, Will? Oh, another day. Check it out, bud. That oh, looks that awesome. bad, don't it? Yeah. Yeah, nice job on the blackout, man. Nice job installing it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks sick whenever you get all the, the back panel on there and the tail lights. Yeah, these are just a all the different masking and... I like this. I'm starting to, to like the 71 tail end a lot better than the 70. I thought well, the 70 was pretty cool. But any this, this tail looks is good. Really, yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah, but this looks really mean, though. Yeah, that's cool. It does. You ready yeah. to put the bumper on? Yeah, yeah. Hey, while you're here, man, you want to give me a I'll hand? take over since Alyssa's not here. So yeah. This is her yeah, forte. Yeah, right. help out a whole bunch. I got everything just kind of loose. I just need help kind of putting it on there. And so it's really cool. We got a a great team here at GYC, and it's it's great that we all work together, and so it just it shows in our work. Oh, I like these. how you favor your side. Yeah, I was gonna say, there right. you go. I just need one <laughs> to kind of hold it in place there. So I'll see you want paint shop. Are you keeping caught up? Define caught up. <laughs> well, according to Mark, uh, every car out in, the, out in the parking lot primered and ready for paint. Yeah. <laughs> Did yours thread all the way up? Yeah. Of course it did. Yeah, the, the bolt will start to spin as long as you can get them started. It started, but I don't yeah. I don't want it to swing down should, and hit the quarter. It, it should, and it should sit about like that. Yeah, that's not bad. Well, I'm gonna put my finger there. Cool, that'll work there. So that never swings down and hits? No, no, it should have enough gap in there, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, we're good. I'll tighten it up a little bit, and then I leave all these loose so I can side shift it. Oh, okay. Uh, what's left in the back is, like I was saying, uh, rear gravel pan, uh, exhaust tips, and then I'll just start kind of working from the back of the car to the front. So this car's about done then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, drop the radiator in there, and we should be able to fire this thing up and hit the road. I've never been in a muscle car that has AC. Really? Yeah. That works, yeah. I guess I should say. Yep, not the back bumper's on there. I just got to do some final adjustment on it, get it sitting there perfect, get the rear gravel pan on, exhaust tips, button her up, back end of the car's done. Sounds good, buddy. Yep. Hey, thanks for your help, man. You're welcome. Let me know if you need any more. All right, buddy. I just finished putting in all the tail lights, the rear tail panel on the car, uh, put it, putting on the back bumper, the rear volance, uh, the unique, you know, chrome uh, tips that the Challengers had on them, you know, back in 1970. Oh, Willard! You can hey, just go buddy. with Will if you'd like. Hey, Will! Yeah? You got a package in the mail for you. Hey. From who? Um, it looks like a fan or something. It says to my favorite knee shaker, Will Scott. <laughs> Dude, can't even well, there this might one. be documents or something in there. Uh, yeah? Maybe it's a magazine. Ah! No. It's a hat for you. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, there's a note. You want the note? You want to read that? <laughs> yes, it's a do-rag. <laughs> it's a, like a nurse's hat the, for the, the no, doctor. It's like a doctor. Yeah. Who likes the Knicks? What's up with? <laughs> what up, homie? That's why. New York I Mafia put, in the house. That's why I don't put that hat on. Yeah? I'm giving you this in hopes you will wear it. He's going to be disappointed. That's OK. I make it look it good. It might even bring them luck. You're an awesome painter and would love to have you paint my ride. I have an 82 Cutlass Yeah, Supreme. Gutless Supreme. <laughs> it would look super sweet, plum crazy, right? Anyway, continue doing what you do and don't let Mark bring you down. He's whack. Thanks, Clyde. Right on. Well, Clyde, um, I don't paint 1982 Cutlasses. I've had a couple cutlasses. It doesn't them. surprise They're me. They're great. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah. And I don't like the Knicks. So thank you for uh, the nice letter and the nice hat, but 
If we're going sports in basketball, we gotta gotta stick with Miami. So, are you gonna wear this at all for your fans? Since you know he. No, I told him in. thank. You. No, I said. I thank know you. you said thank you, but I mean you could at least go a little bit further for the you know. You've been told that a few viewers, times, haven't you? A little bit further, <laughs> but um bump. I asked America to send me hats. Uh, obviously, with what I'm wearing, that's not quite what I received, but uh, this is what I received so far. You got a lot of hair. Oh, look. There's a lot of hair. You got gloves, scalpel. So, thanks, Clyde. Um, appreciate it. I hope it wasn't used, or I just thought about that. Yeah. Hey, you know what you on. could do is sign it and send it back to Clyde. There you go. So, I will personally sign this, and I'll get it right back in the mail to New York City. So, thank you. I'm going to do Bondo in this thing. Heck yeah. You like the Knicks? Uh, I like sports. Oh, you're one of those guys. I'm a basketball fan, you know? Okay. Just send normal hats. Hats have got some cool on them. You know, something cool. So I guess, that, you know what? I wasn't specific when I asked for this. So send me your hats. Just make sure they're cool hats. So thank you, Clyde, for the hat. But I do need to get back to work, and this hat's not going to quite make the list. Dave is doing a phenomenal job on the Challenger, coming along nicely. Excited to see that one go back to the owner. I've got a few minutes downtime over in the machine shop, so I'm gonna round up Alyssa, have her give me a hand doing it so she knows how they go on right versus how you can easily do it wrong. But I think it'll help Dave out at the same time. Alyssa and I are just doing the final graphics on our 71 Challenger RT. It's our Gringo 383 formal roof. It gets the RT decal, all right? So we're gonna install this on it. I have the original engineering plans Handful of guys in the world have these. This is a copy of the original engineering plans that show exactly where it's at. It's got the center line of the hood here. And then it's showing that it's 40 inches from the leading edge, B, to the beginning of the top of the uh, decal. After we do that, we do have the scallops. These are blackouts that go on the scallops of the quarter panels. Oh, those are cool. We'll put those on. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our tack cloth. We know that it's going to be somewhere in the middle of this hood here. Ching, 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 ching. So it's going to look cool. This car has a lot of decals. Yeah. Doesn't it? 71, they really started getting, 70 and 71, they started getting pretty loaded up with that stuff. So are we going to use the application gel or are we going to use we'll your We'll use the solution? app gel when it's time. We want to lay out a measurement. Okay. So I'm going to grab a piece of tape. The quarter is going to be our mark for the center line, 26 and a quarter. So I'm gonna put that at the center right there, okay? So right here is the sweet spot, right? Top of the letters go right here, and then the center line of the decal goes right there. Okay. Okay. Take this, we're gonna wanna slop this around, sloppy Joe. So how come you're deciding to use the application gel instead of your little because mixture? Because this is a really small decal. Okay. The odds of getting air bubbles in this, you'd have to be pretty <laughs> to do something like that. Well, pretty indeed. Then we got to eyeball the center line. Then we're going to take a tape measure. And we're going to measure from this edge to the beginning of the writing here, which is exactly 20. Right there is 15 sixteenths, 19 and 15 sixteenths. This one is 19 and 15 sixteenths, so that's dead needs center. needs to go up a little bit though, right? Let me set it. Gag, gag, goo, goo now. What is that? You're trying to trick your eyes. You're trying to trick my eyes? I'm trying to trick my eyes. Into seeing straight? Isn't that why you have glasses on? God, those are the toughest ones because of the way they're cut. Mm-hmm. I think that looks really good. I would almost say the same thing. I think that's it. I like it. Once we have that laid down, we can pull up our edges of the uh, backing paper. And you still want to move kind of slow, but that's what's nice about that gel that they provide is for these smaller decals especially, it's awesome. Yeah. Because look at that. If that was my own solution, I would have had to wait a couple hours to be able to pull it off of there. Yeah. Looks good. Yep, I like it. Yeah, this is a cool car. All right, so now we got to put on our scallops. It was a one year only, it was 1971, all right? That it was the first and the last year for the scallops. Uh, not positive, but I believe it's J46. 
I'll do the back one here first. So I need my application gel. And I'll need my squeegee. All right. Oh, it scares me. So I'm just gonna let that evaporate for a while. Right now, it looks like they're right on the ridge where they belong. Yep, right, right up against the car, right? Yep, yep, right up against the car. And I am going to let you try one on the other side. Okay. So. Got the back one, because the front one gave you a little bit of problems. So. Yeah, yeah, do the back one. Wipe it down with a tack cloth. Make sure there's nothing in there. That's good. Don't press too hard. Okay. Because the honey on this will go off on that. This has honey on it. Oh, okay. So you don't want to press too hard. Okay. And now you don't want to get these wet, remember? Yes. It destroys them. Do we have any extras so of these So I ones? put these away somewhere safe while you're playing with that stuff. Is this the one for the back? Yep. Where's the other one at? It's on the table. Okay. Do you probably need more than that? Load that mother bear up. Okay. You don't have another set of these if I mess up, do you? No, I don't. Oh, God. Nobody, just for the record, uh -huh. has ever messed up of these up. No. Not even once. You've never. Never. <laughs> They're the easiest ones in the world to do. Okay. Maybe that's easy for me to say since I can't even get the backing paper get the off. Back? Of yeah. Right. So I'm a... Can you even see it, though? I can see it. Mm -hmm. Can we do it? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, nubs. Little First of all, it's nubs. right here. Look at this. Okay, I know. I did that on purpose. What? All right, go ahead and put it on there. And this is the right direction, right? Yeah. Fit it top to bottom. That's probably pretty good, but the bottom needs to go in a little bit more towards the body. What you can do is you can center this. You can get this part here locked down so it won't move. Okay. Okay. So. Squeeze you that center section out. So now, once you do that, you know it can't move in here. Now you just work your ends. Okay. Well, don't be afraid of it. Well, you scare me. I'm afraid of you. Okay. I'm a, I'm a bad guy. Okay, so I think the top looks good. So. Oh. See, I was trying to pull it away down there. Mm -hmm. You want to push it in while you squeegee. So we got the Challenger done. Her side turned out really nice. Uh, good job. The RT is on the hood as well, looking gorgeous. They're getting ready to put the transmission on. So that means all the other things, the oil pan, the scatter shield, which is the bell housing, all that stuff is in place. And that's what you see now, is they've got the, the transformer, which is the one we chose to go with versus the tubular one, is down there into position. We've got the transmission ready to slide into the clutch and bolt up to the bell housing. Once those two things are married together, we'll be able to take this over and let the CUDA down on it and see how we're getting for a fit. Hopefully it's a good fit and we don't have to do a bunch of cutting. That was Most a little rubber too band easy. down here. Yeah. I know. All right, so that's way fun. too easy. Everybody stop. <laughs> Do it again. That's it went that's way too easy. easy. This, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. I know. That's cool. Hey, how Alyssa. You how are you doing? Good. My name is Alyssa. Jeff. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. That's Ron. Hi. Ron. Hi. Nice that's to meet you. Nice to see you too. It's been a good morning. It's been a very good morning. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of little struggles along the way. We were lacking a few tools, but. Uh, it's all part of the learning process, and this is definitely going to help us to help other people to be able to do this process sooner because we'll be able to tell them in advance exactly what they can anticipate. Yeah. This is what you got to do. You guys are kind of pioneering the way, huh? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> looks good. We got the transmission bolted on there right now, so looks like they're trying to uh, unite the, the transformer down there, the cross member, with the engine. And get that done, we'll be able to move it over to the other side and see how it fits in the car. Yeah, we're going to make it fit. It's uh, being that those lower control arms are a lot wider, it kind of obstructs the, the back position here. If you see on the, the K member, these are your two bolt holes on the K member. Our dolly is set up into where those pins right there are supposed to go in the back one, but it obviously won't because the control arm's in the way. A standard Chrysler control arm is set back here that the torsion bar goes into. This doesn't use torsion bars, it's got this big lower control arm, so it's obstructing that. So we're gonna try to just put the front holes on the pins and then the transmission will hang out a little bit, but it should be just fine. So we're just buttoning up the last motor mount and 
that stage. That big old bad boy, bad boy, what you gotta do, what I gotta do when I come for you. It's awesome. So yeah, after the guys get it loaded up on the engine stand, we're gonna take it over to the assembly shop and get it put in the car. Let's insert this bad, bad. Ready? All right. Well, it's not, not too bad. Back end will need to be kicked over a little bit, I think. <laughs> yeah, easier there said than done. Here. Nice and gentile. More? Uh, right there. Right there, I'm thinking. Okay. Go ahead and go down, Mike. Yep. Yeah, because we're going to hit that wiring harness there. Whip it. And whip it good. Uh -huh. It's nice not having a fan or nothing. Well, on this there. one certainly leaves us a lot more room than the other Hemi we put in. Yeah, yeah a ton good more. Lord, room. that thing was a tight fit. Yeah, it looks pretty good on the firewall. Not looking bad. Mm -mm. Okay. Right now we're centered up on the center bar. From the standpoint of clearing the engine compartment, beautiful, phenomenal. Yeah. This header looks like it might hit the yeah. frame rail. How no, do you? No, we look got it about on? an inch on it. Okay. Yeah, well, I, we're still looking pretty good. I think you're looking good on the K members. So. Once it gets up past that, too, oh, we can move this hey, around more. Uh, Je hey, Jeff. That's pretty Jeff. close now. Yeah. You know what still didn't get cut out? Huh? These uh, these reinforcing brackets right here didn't get taken out. Oh, Which so one's these here? The, yeah, these. We oh. can do that after. That has. Oh, to we go. always have to take those out just for the K member, huh? Yeah, it's going to sit against that. Yeah. Do we just want to leave it where everything right yeah, to our yeah, yeah. yeah. straight up? So, yeah. Okay. All right, we have to take a little bit of a break there and remove the factory gussets here that once held the, uh, was that the bump stop? That's for the it bump stop. It was the bump stops. stop, reinforcing yeah. for the yeah, bump stop. Yeah, the reinforcement for the bump stops, we had to take those out. Uh, so now we have a nice flush mounting area here for our uh, Magnum Force transformer to go right up against. So now this area will fit flush with the frame rail area. That's just one of the mods. We had to do it before too on the 70 Cuda. We just all kind of got so excited about putting the engine we forgot. Anyway, 10 minutes later, here we go. Yep. And it's the power of love. Mm, mm, mm. Yep, good job, got it. Okay, keep coming and... We're looking good so far on the back of the transmission. How are you doing on your K-member? Still got a Really light. great. It's almost on that it's hose. It's going to hit on this hose now. That's right there. That's it. That's as far as you can go for the moment. OK, hang on there. A couple of do. bolts started in those two rear I holes. I got them up on that back window right to your right, Mike. Things are looking pretty good, actually. We came right down on top of the K-member bolts right off the bat. It was almost like we planned it. Uh, Mike, can you pull down on this front frame rail? <laughs> Something's hitting. Yeah, the bell housing of the train is hitting the pinch weld around the or base, around right the transmission, the, the bell housing tunnel. So we got the K-member bolts, or the transformer bolts in this case, up into place. Uh, Royal showed up, of course he did, now that all the hard work's done. He's underneath there right now. They're putting the transmission cross-member bolts in it, so everything's kind of supported on its own. Then we can raise it up look at our clearances, see what kind of provisions we may have to make, and maybe at that point, do the final cut and fit, weld in our tunnel. With the engine successfully installed, Mark anticipates the arrival of the man responsible for this project, the president of a very special company. Uh, right now, I am waiting the arrival of Pietro Gorlier. He is the CEO of Mopar. Uh, he's coming out to check out the car, check out the shop, check out the build, make sure that things are going the way they should be going. And we're pretty, we're pretty excited around here, you know? So, you know, it's that or no car. So. Okay, well, so here's where yep. we're at. We've got our 392 Hemi installed. I'm Pietro Gorlier. I'm the president of Mopa. You met Ron earlier from yeah, Magnum Force. Yeah, how are you doing? Nice to uh, meet you. He was gracious enough to come up and help us with his suspension. Now, we could have adapted that onto the stock Mopar K member, but being our short time period here to be able to get this car looking the way it needs to for, for SEMA, 
he had already invented the wheel, so I didn't want to invent it. So <laughs> like he came idea. up very graciously and installed his really cool rack and pinion system, which is actually great anyway. So The project is, uh, first of all, to bring back the ability to drop uh, a Mopar engine, a heavy engine with uh, a proper controller and harness into, into a car for restoration. So we decided that, that uh, only someone that is really specialized in Mopar cars can do the first car with this new controller harness and engine. This is something you're gonna love and this is gonna be such an easy promotion. So you've got a basic 70 Cudi, 71 Cudi here, that's all. Yeah. That's the only penetration in the yeah. firewall, one clean penetration. That is the factory floor hump right there. Everything you see is 100% factory, except that the, to get the Tremec six speed, yeah. we had to cut a small section of the transmission cross member reinforcement. That's it. And I like the pistol grip. I love the pistol grip. You can't argue with that. Can I ask you a question? Yes. You, you have a big shop. You're yeah. an expert. Yes, sir. What about if I am uh, really just uh, a guy that wants to do this in his own garage with, I mean, a dad and son? The claim to fame here isn't the first time we built a 392. You've been offering that yeah. for a while. It's the ability to put it in anything that you want to with the least amount of headache when it comes to the wiring and making that's, it run. That's exactly the idea. When you talk about Mopar, you need to find really the passion for the brand. And only in this place, you find people that uh, have dedicated their life and their work to Mopars. And so, perfect match. With the controller and the wiring that you've made available for this, it just sparks the imagination now as to where are your limits. They're, they're literally in what you want to put it in now. Where before is, I, I was terrified at the idea of trying to put a late model Hemi in any of my cars because of the wiring. That was the only reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. Problem solved. It's done and done. Problem solved. I'm excited because uh, it will be finally the moment where we will see this engine, this controller, this harness to work in a car and bringing it back to life. So I can't wait. Well, thank you because uh, Mopar, it is what it is. Thanks to people like you that are keeping Mopar alive and keeping the heritage of Mopar fresh. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you, my you. friend. All right. Okay, party time! In case you got distracted Googling TPS reports, here's why the ghouls didn't sleep this week. Alyssa successfully applied the final decals on Box 383 Challenger RT, while Dave completed the interior, steering column, and rear end on what Mark would call a gorgeous gringo panty dropper. Mark and Ron went over the options for the Firepower Cuda's new suspension, ultimately deciding on an old school look with new school tech. Will received mail from a fan and a new magic hat. Will this be the start of a new trend? And the ghouls came together to get the SEMA Cuda's engine installed for fit, just in time for its sponsor to visit the shop and see its progress with the new Crate Hemi. Now, with only 40 days left before the CUDA is revealed at SEMA, the only question is, will Mark's ego be too inflated to finish the build in time? Only time will tell. <laughs> he was saying mm -hmm. just that he thinks mm -hmm. Mopar he thinks to me. But I was saying actually, Mopar or no car? Oh, hey, no. Whoa. <laughs> time out. That, that's Mopar or no car? car. That, that's my... I mean, Mopar or no car. Okay, you may be the CEO of Mopar, okay, but I, <laughs> but I invented that line now. I don't have it written and down. And I've been <laughs> saying that line for seven years. All right, he gets it. <laughs> you win. Thanks, brother. Thank you. All right.